Welcome back to week four. This presentation is going to cover a topic area that students often have the most questions about, submitting your speech online. I've tried to simplify the process as much as possible and provide a lot of help documentation. If you look in the supplemental links folder for this week, you will find lots of guides to help pages. And if you look at the document in your syllabus area about submitting your speech online, you'll find lots of helpful screenshots. So I hope that between those two things and this presentation, submitting your speech online is going to be a breeze. Now I know that we've talked before about how difficult it is to take a speech class online. Besides gathering the audience, one of the biggest challenges you may be facing is how to submit your speech to your instructor. Because some kinds of video files are not compatible with Blackboard, your instructor most likely wants you to submit the speech to a free online video hosting website like YouTube. This presentation aims to help you upload your speech with ease. One of the main goals of this presentation is also to show you where to go for help if you need it. Let's face it, when we're working with computers, sometimes things go wrong, and knowing where to turn for help is our best protection against uncertainty. YouTube is the most popular video sharing website on the internet, and it works really well for our purposes because it supports so many file types. It also comes in handy for this course because it means that your instructor doesn't have to worry about opening a file attachment and it has customizable privacy settings, so you don't have to worry about who has access to your video. As you know from this class, we use YouTube all the time to watch speeches for assignments and discussions, so you should be familiar with its basic look and design already. Uploading a video to YouTube is as simple as attaching a document to an email or uploading an assignment to Blackboard. So even if you've never done it before, don't worry. I have total confidence in your abilities. When you go to YouTube's homepage, you'll notice a search box at the top of the page. Next to that, you'll see a link that says Browse and one that says Upload. When you click on Upload, you'll see this screen. Click the yellow Video Upload button and you'll be asked to locate the file on your computer. Find the file you need and select it. This process works like attaching a file to an email or to Blackboard. It may take a few minutes for your file to upload, and it could take longer, hours maybe, if your file is large. Sometimes your file might be so large that YouTube cannot upload it. If this happens, you will need to figure out how to make your file smaller. Depending on the program you use to make your video, most of you will have used Windows Media Player, which comes standard on PCs and is the default application your computer will run when you plug your camera in to load the video onto your computer. You could probably cut your video in half and upload it in two chunks to YouTube. You may also have other options, such as saving the file in a different format to make it smaller, etc. Because your instructor doesn't know exactly what kind of issue you're having, it's not up to him or her to walk you through the upload process. Even if you share your exact issue with your instructor, your instructor is likely not a YouTube expert or a very good tech support person. That's why it's up to you to familiarize yourself with the help function on YouTube and seek out help for your problem. Luckily, YouTube has an excellent help section. A good place to start is at the General Help Center where you can browse by topics or type your own problem into the text box. If you're having a specific problem, like for example your video is taking hours to upload, you can type your problem directly into the search box. My video won't upload, for example. You'll be directed to a number of helpful explanations and tips and you'll likely be able to solve your problem. Another way to troubleshoot is to Google the specific problem you're having. There's an excellent chance that other people have had similar problems and have been able to find help on the internet. You can too. Once you have successfully uploaded your video, you have several options for controlling who can see the video. If you don't care who can see the video, do nothing. This is the default setting. But if you want to make sure that only people to whom you give the link can see the video, then you need to make the video unlisted. Here's the most important thing to keep in mind. Once you've made your video unlisted, you still have to make sure that your instructor knows where to go to see the video. 
To do this, you simply need to give your instructor the link to the video. This means that you need to cut and paste the URL or the website address. Your instructor should be able to copy and paste the web address directly into his or her browser and go immediately to your video. Make sure that if you're using YouTube, you should not make the video private. You should make it unlisted. Now, if you don't want to use YouTube, although I recommend that you do since it's the application supported by Blackboard, Vimeo is another excellent free video sharing website. It's a great alternative to YouTube and something to check out if YouTube isn't working to, for you for some reason. Vimeo is a little bit different because you have to sign up for a free account. And make sure that you choose the free basic version. That'll work just fine for EN 116. If you have problems with Vimeo, just like YouTube, you'll probably find an answer to the problem if you type the trouble you are having into the help, center, into the help box at the help center, which looks like this. And unlike YouTube, you can password protect your video. So you simply choose the password protected option and then type a password in this box. Now, if you choose the password protection option, you'll have to remember to give your instructor the password when you give him or her the link to your video. It's really important that you make sure the instructor can view the video. Please be in contact with your instructor if you're having trouble with either of these websites. I'm sure that your instructor will help you, but he or she needs to know that you need help. Do not wait until the night before your speech is due to start using one of these websites. It may be too late for your instructor to help you at that point. Good luck, and please do not hesitate to reach out if you are having a problem.